reinstall Evans engine into his enforcer team offshore. Also, I got a question about clutch maintenance, so we'll cover a little bit of that as well. Okay, so um, the the this is the the coil that was bad on Evans engine. Um, it a couple of things. This is it was real rusty right in here. Uh, that might have been the problem. It's also a, kind of a Chinese copy of an actual Zenoa coil. Um, this is the Zenoa coil. Uh, we made a plate to kind of attach it so it's not kind of getting in the way under here. And what happened was when we did our little at the pond mischief, um, this, the gray coil was attached to this screw, wasn't tight enough, and then this coil dropped down and started dragging on the re on the um um the hell is that it's a rotor <laughs> it started dragging on the rotor um so what it did is, is kind of scraped that a little bit and what he said is it 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 when he was running it it ran like it had a limiter on it with uh um, so if you ever run into that experience check your clearance here if you ever want to set this gap, just a regular business card, uh, fold it, just kind of round it over here, and then um, tighten these two screws. All right, as I mentioned on uh, the last video, somebody asked about uh, clutch maintenance. So, so 3 16th Allen key. These shoes um, are very similar to a drum brake. You know, what's a drum brake? If you don't know what a drum brake is, ask somebody who knows what an album is. They'll tell you. Good look at your shoes. Got a little bit of rust here. That's okay. Um, one thing you want to watch out for is that these are a, a they're a black oxide alloy. Uh, they really need to be because that's a harder steel. Uh, they can rust. Um, what you want to do is is if you if you can. It looks like I've got a little bit of rust in here. There's some. Uh, spring washers uh, right underneath that head so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna spritz just a little bit of WD-40 on that now when you do this be, don't get oil on these shoes um, it's just like drum brakes um, you want to uh, you don't want to get any kind of oil on those on those shoes they'll degrade the pad Make sure to get all this excess penetrating oil away from those pads. Okay, so that being done, everything else looks okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and put this, uh, uh, put that bell and housing back on, and then um, get ready to put it back in the boat. Rocks in the socks. 
and then he called it spaghetti as he wrote down city blocks. And everybody thinks Yankees and nutcase. Parents call him whack job, kids call him butt face. Okay, while the engine is out, it's a uh, good time to do a little bit of clutch maintenance. Um, what I did, and I'm just kind of just showing you for the for the video. I already did this, but took the cone, cone off and um, got a paper towel in there and just kind of uh, wiped out all the gunk that tends to get in there. This is uh, eight. These are 832 socket head cap screws. And this is a 964ths Allen key. Going off and um, wipe the gunk off here. Got it out of here. Also, while this is off, give this a spin just to make sure everything's smooth. You know, there's nothing going on with the bearings, and it uh, spins nicely. So I'm gonna put that back on. And and we'll give it a little spot of grease. And the enforcer housing is a glass infused nylon. Um, and these are stainless steel bolts, so when you get uh, you get tight there. Just be careful not to over torque them. Just nice and snug is good, and they'll stick because of the uh, way the steel sticks to the to the nylon. So that's reinstalled. Um, okay, so since I cleaned it out, there's absolutely no uh, double O grease in the cone. So I'm going to put half an ounce of double O grease. And if you can, let's see if you can see this. I'm starting at just about 20. So um, half an ounce is just about 10 milliliters, and that's what these are, is milliliters. So I'm just going to push this down until it just gets over the 10 mark there, and that should be good. is going to help to just kind of lubricate everything in there. You don't want to stuff it. Uh, if you pack it, you can damage your bearings. So don't pack it. Um, do that, you know, usually put, once I've done that, you can, you know, put about, I don't know, five milliliters every time you run, go out to the pond in it. Um, should be good. Again, just be careful not to pack it. Okay, I think we're ready to go back in. Um, got engine's pipe reinstalled. I have, with that focus, put some silicone around the stinger here. Also added an extra O-ring. The, the one that was on still looked good. Um, just to add the extra O-ring so it gives a little bit more pressure pushing the cooling ring, cooling ring against the manifold. Um, I wanna make sure uh, that your nut is still on your stuffing tube and your brass ring is still on there. Um, I was also told <laughs> after I pulled the engine out that it's all a lot easier if you take the water pump off the rails. So uh, I did that for the reinstall. I just kind of tucked it over here out of the way. And <clears throat> first thing we're going to do is you might have noticed this, this, these dampers are 
not as thick as these dampers and that's just got to do with the thickness of the mounts it just depends on your mount so there's these dampers with some spacers and these are the full dampers we'll install the rear dampers first I'm gonna get this make sure the pipe lines up there you go And again, these bolts, there's long ones and short ones. The long ones have to go through the spacers in order to get uh, into the um, dampers. So the short ones go to the back, front ones, uh, long ones go to the front. Make sure your stuffing tube is in your uh, cone there. That engine is mounted. We're going to go ahead and tighten this up here on the stuffing tube. The radio box in the um, water pump. Use these screws. Basically, if you want to attach your water pump to your rails, you just, uh, these are like inch and a half, I think, um, and they're number eight, and you'll uh, just take the stock bolts out and put these in. Obviously, you want to pilot your rails first.
Let's get the radio box. Okay, what I'm gonna do, what I'm trying to do here is uh, to get the to get the push rod back in uh, at least part way before I start to put the radio box in it. Um, before I actually secure the radio box down, hopefully it'll be a little easier. Evan's setup is has to have a soldered clevis out here towards the back and so the the only it just it's just because of the his radio box that really the easiest way to go about it is to cut is push your heavy push rod go this way and we'd normally go like maybe we'd go like this have the push rod come out from the inside just by the you know the direction of the boots i'm just going to try to gently but firmly screw this just screw it into the boot take advantage of the threads and it is going in. Yep. Okay. Um, if you want to oil, get a little lubrication on your push rod, um, be sure to use silicone. This is just uh, shock oil for RC car. It's 100% silicone. Get a little dab on there. silicone just slid right in. We'll have to do the same thing here at the radio box. You probably won't be able to see this. And that's in enough for now. That uh, radio box in position right there. Make sure my wire lines aren't in the way. And let's reattach the clevis. Spread it out enough to get it uh, over the steering arm. There we go. 
Okay, Evan, I don't have his battery or his transmitter, so I'm just gonna kinda get this as mechanically close as I can, and uh, he'll have to make adjustments with his electronics. straight just make it 90 degrees This party started. <laughs> Same deal, I don't have uh don't have his radio, so we'll just uh, out there. He's just gonna have to. Um, set his radio up when he gets his battery pack in there and everything else. That on there snug, you might have to change it later. Okay. Let's see if I have a 14 inch zip tie. Thank you. 